Okay, this is my first time to vlog by myself. Like, Carla just set this up. The team's not here, so I'm... Is this what vlogging really feels like? Like, you're just by yourself talking. <laughs> All right, um, really excited about this topic and I'm enjoying the conversations that we've been having uh, on this vlog. Uh, a number of people have commented and I, I try to, to get to the comments on time but there have been a number of great conversations personally as well. People who have emailed, who have messaged me on, on social media. Some people I don't know, a lot of people I do know and uh, I, I enjoy you know, both those kinds. And I think there's a specific people group who we're talking, that a bunch of us are talking, people who are similar. And I said that in the very first vlog, uh, people who like to ask questions, people who don't want uh, pat answers, you know, slogans, people who are like, give me a little bit more than that, okay? Um, I get that there's this point, but I also see this counterpoint, so how do I reconcile the two? People who don't like false dichotomies, people who don't like na, sasabihin mo sila na, ito lang yung pagpiplima, itong dalawa lang. Eh, bakit itong dalawa lang? Ba't di pwedeng pareho? Ba't di pwedeng wala? Diba? And that's great. And I love that that's who I'm talking to. That's what I've been doing this vlog for. So I've been really, really pleased with that. Been thanking God for that. Been thanking my wife for helping me uh, meet this goal and the team also behind this. That's what I've been really appreciative of. I think part of the reason why I'm, I, I care so much about that people group is because that's how I was growing up. That's how I am until now. Until now. You know, someone who asked too many questions. Uh, I was quote unquote that guy, you know, that person who would honestly would take it too far. The whole class is ready to go home and you still have one more question because you want to learn. You don't realize you're hogging the recitation and so you consciously are like, do I raise my hand now or not raise my hand? And it's really from a desire to learn more. Uh, admittedly, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, there would be times I would go too far, uh, be insensitive to people around me. And that's kind of what I want to talk about in this vlog. When can that go too far? First of all, I, I want to say there's nothing wrong if you're someone who likes to ask questions. Sometimes in church culture, this can be looked down on, or in Filipino culture, it can be looked down on. There have been articles that talk about how smart shaming is a thing in the Philippines, where if you're someone who thinks critically, who has questions, who takes a different position, then that being said, there's also smart people who shame others, and so you can understand where that would come from. Sometimes this happens in church also, where in churches, people um, will put faith on one end, like, do you have faith in God or do you think? I'm, don't, I'm not someone who thinks, I'm someone who has faith in God. As if reason and faith don't go together. As if discovery and using your mental faculties don't go together. And, and that's where many people I've talked to, whether in discipleship, in church, or through this medium, said their concerns na, buti na lang, di ba? Sa wakas, pwede palang pag-usapan to, pwede palang magtanong. Kasi, hindi naman pala mali magtanong, di ba? I like this post shared by a friend of mine who's very much like this. His name is JD Perida. He's our senior pastor in our church in Bohol. He posts most of his content on Facebook. So I, I, I highly recommend you follow him on Facebook. But he posted this, this Facebook status recently that said, God goes beyond reason, but never against it. He was quoting this person named Dr. Kevin Gary Smith, who wrote a book called Integrated Theology. And he said, in church life, appeals to the mysteries of God in the leading of the Spirit are often used to excuse lazy and sloppy thinking. Ooh, I've seen that. Have I been guilty of that? Maybe. But I've definitely seen that. Instead of thinking, instead of reasoning, instead of engaging, instead of responding to someone's questions thoughtfully, we give a snappy, sloppy slogan or take a Bible verse out of context and just apply to that person. Not just, Jesus, take the wheel or let go and let God. Sometimes that works. A lot of the time that doesn't work. And that's what he's talking about here. He says, this sometimes fuels the feeling of the world that faith is irrational. Theology, when done properly, demonstrates that God's revelation goes beyond reason but not against it. The way we do our theological reflection must uphold high standards of logic. What is the difference of going beyond reason and going against reason? Beyond logic and going against logic. Beyond logic admits that there are things that I will not be able to fully comprehend in my limited mind, but I will go as far as my logic and my reason will allow me to go. And then the next step you know, of worship and submission is beyond that. Against logic would be to say God is a straight circle or that or that you know God is a married bachelor you know these are these are not appeals to mystery you can't use the mystery of God for that that's just illogical that's irrational the thing is what happens here is we make a false choice between are you reasonable do you think or do you, are you someone who has faith that's what's wrong that's not what we're saying here and I hope that this vlog 
has demonstrated that, has communicated that. In fact, many of the people who, who respond to this vlog, positively or negatively, are responding because of this thing. We're doing our best to acknowledge the new ones, to say, may ginito, pero may ganyan rin. Ingat tayo dito, huwag tayong sumobra dyan. Alam mo yun, kasi ganun ang buhay, ganun ang katotohanan. That's, what the, that's how God made the world. So it's good to question, okay? I'm trying to lay that foundation first. It's good to question. But what is our position, our posture ba, when we question? What is the mindset that we're coming from? Let me see, is mic still on? Because there's a difference between critical thinking and a critical heart. Or maybe if we, if we can use a different term, critical thinking and cynical thinking. And that's the question I want us to ask ourselves now. Am I just thinking critically or am I thinking cynically already? Someone who doesn't believe that those things happen. What's the difference and how can I tell the difference with myself? Critical thinking is someone who questions to get to the truth. I'm asking questions. I'm not accepting that, that slogan. I'm, I'm looking beneath the surface because I want to get to the truth. I want something true. I don't want something that's fake. I don't want something shallow. Cynical thinking, on the other hand, questions because they don't believe there is a truth. I'm questioning because lahat naman kayo, mali. Lahat naman yun kita. Lahat naman yun naloko. Which one are you? Do you believe there is a truth? And that's what you're trying to get to or you don't believe in any truth and that's why you reject everybody's assertions. C.S. Lewis in his book, The Abolition of Man, at the end of the book, talks about this, this tendency of people to over-rationalize and want to explain away everything. And here's what he says, you cannot go on explaining away forever. You will find that you have explained explanation itself away. Meaning, if you keep explaining away forever, you keep explaining, ah, oh, no, that's just hormones. Ah, oh, no, that can be explained by natural processes. If you keep doing that, and there's nothing that's ultimately true that you can hold on to, eventually you will have no reason that you can hold on to. You cannot go on seeing through things forever. The point of seeing through something is to see something through it. Okay, one more time. The point of seeing through something, I, I see through this so that I can see something behind it. It is good that the window should be transparent because the street or the garden beyond it is opaque. In other words, I can see through the window so that I can see the garden and I cannot see through the garden. If I could see through the garden, I couldn't see anything, which is the point C.S. Lewis is making. How if you saw through the garden too? It's no use trying to see through first principles. If you see through everything, then everything is transparent. But a wholly transparent world is an invisible world. To see through all things is the same as not to see. In other words, a person who insists on being able to poke holes on everything, on tearing everything down, is a person who ultimately, logically and rationally, sees nothing, holds on to nothing. And we know that's not true, and that's why our, our society has latched on to my own truth. Basta, I, I don't care if other people can, but basta, this is true for me. But that is not reality either. We make up those rules for the metaphysical, pero sa totoo mga, we don't do that for engineering, we don't do that for medicine, we don't do that for, well, hopefully not for science. The point is, are you questioning to see the truth? Or are you questioning because you don't believe there is any truth anymore? Which one are you? Critical thinking has a higher standard for trusting. That's what critical thinking is. It's not that you don't want to trust, it's just you have a high standard. People have disappointed you in the past or you've seen the, doesn't make sense to you, so you want something more. That's fair, that's good. But cynical thinking is not willing to trust. I don't care how much, how good you are. I, I'm, not, I'm not there anymore. Notice it's no longer a function of your reason or your logic, but it's your heart. Ayo mo lang. It's your emotion, it's your volition. Ayo mo lang talaga. Critical thinking is open to evidence and reasoning. Just like I said, they have a higher standard for trusting, but if you supply the evidence, if you supply the reasoning, ah, okay, yung nga naman pala, may sense. Cynical thinking will not accept any evidence or reasoning. And this is why I know where some people will, who will question the truth of Scripture, or question the existence of God, or question the, the moral laws of the Bible. And when they question these things, what I'm trying to figure out first is, is this person at the cynical point already, or just critical? Because if they're just exercising critical thinking, we can reason together. But if it's a cynical point of view, then ah, okay, ibang usapan yan. Nasa puso yan, may nangyari sa buhay ng taong yan, kaya ayaw nilang maniwala. And before I throw all kinds of proofs or evidences, I haven't addressed the real issue at hand. Critical thinking admits the limits to its own knowledge, ability, and experience. Hey, I'm just asking questions. I think that, you know, I, this is how it makes sense to me. Cynical thinking, though, considers our own knowledge, our own ability, our own exper experience as the highest standard. 
I've seen enough. I've talked to all of you. I've seen other people like you. Malika, Malika, Malika. Critical thinking is willing to learn, to change, and to admit to being wrong. Cynical thinking has already decided in its own rightness and will intentionally misunderstand if necessary to maintain that position. Yan ang mahirap. Cynical thinkers will paint their adversaries in the worst possible light. And I see that, you know, comments and responses to my vlogs on social media. There are some people who will respond critically and they'll say, hey, I, I disagree with this, I disagree with that. And then there's people, you, you can see in the comments, who will intentionally push my position to one direction and say, ah, you clearly mean this. No, if you watch the video, you know, there's so much evidence that I don't mean that. But they will push it in that direction so that they can maintain their own position. And it doesn't have to be just me. When you're with your parents, when you, with the word of God, when a church leader, when you encounter evidence that challenges what, you're, what you believe, where you are, are you thinking critically or are you thinking cynically? And I pray that we will be critical thinkers, so we will engage our hearts and our minds. And some of us may be already in the place of cynicism, okay? We're cynical about the nation. Right? Electoral process is coming up. Ah, lahat naman yan magnanakaw. Ah, wala namang pupuntahan yung Pilipinas. See, that's a person who doesn't believe that there is any truth or goodness or beauty to be found in the Philippine nation anymore. I hope that's not where you are. Or maybe you're, you're cynical about society in general. I used to see this a lot with, with young people online. I have no hope for humanity. I hope you're not there. And if you are, I encourage you to, to ask God to open your heart. No hope for humanity, talaga, the entire human race, walang pag-asa dito. Some of you are cynical about our faith, about Christianity, about the Bible, you've been hurt. And I hope that you know that there is still something true. In fact, the very fact that you are disappointed, the very fact that you are saying, ah, oh, they should have done this instead of that, means that you believe there was something good and that good wasn't given to you. But that good is still there. You weren't wrong for believing it. You weren't wrong for thinking it's there. It's still there. God is still alive. Leaders can make mistakes. I'll make, I'll make a mistake. I'll disappoint you. But, but God is still good. God is still true. God is still beautiful. That's who you're after. In short, being cynical is less a function of the mind and more a function of our emotions and our resolutions, our heart and our will. In a recent tweet, Ed Stetzer was quoting this you know, preacher, I think, named Trevin Wax. And he said, we need more critical minds and less critical spirits. We need more critical minds and less critical spirits, less cynical spirits. There's a guy on TikTok who said something and it, it really struck me because it, it made me realize, yeah, I think that's the issue with cynical people. I wish I could share it, but I, I can't find him. That's the problem with TikTok and it's for you page. You don't remember people's handles and, and, and usernames. So he was a street preacher, a college preacher. Hey, if you find him, comment him in the section. And he was saying, look, if you're cynical, cynical people are people who have been hurt, who have been hurt, who trusted at one point and were let down, were disappointed. And that's why they came to the conclusion, I'm not supposed to trust. I shouldn't trust. There's nothing true. There's nothing good. There's nothing beautiful. And I think he put his finger right on the issue. And some of you, that's where you are. You've been hurt. You've been disappointed. And that's why you don't want to win. And I'm not doing this to shame you or to guilt trip you. Please keep your critical thinking faculties. Please keep your questions. I'm glad you're like that. I'll be I believe God made you that way. But at the same time, do not abandon all hope for truth, goodness, beauty, real value, real meaning in this world. Meron, meron. And if you want to get out of that, then I think, first of all, one, we, we repent of our self-sufficiency. We repent of saying, Lord, I'm sorry for concluding about everything, for saying my experience, my knowledge is the ultimate. See, some of us, that's what we're guilty of. Some of the most evil things in the world have been done from a cynical heart. You know, people who have just said, ah, that's never going to change. Ah, they're never going to be okay. Ah, mali yung taong yan. It justifies all kinds of evil. Recently, my vlog, not my vlog, my wife, my wife vlogged about her social media journey and I was there and if you go to our podcast I'll put the link in the description we go into more detail about it especially more detail about my issues with her and how how terrible I was give it a listen and you'll see you'll hear my cynicism you'll hear my mindset of like she's not gonna change this is just too bad and then it created a terrible terrible response from me to my wife 
I had to repent of my self-sufficiency. I had to repent and say, Lord, I don't, I don't know everything. I know some, I've seen some, I think this, but I cannot conclude that everything I think is correct. Secondly, open your heart and your mind to the one who is bigger, greater, more worthy than you, than me, than everything else. In other words, be open to discovering the truth that you were disappointed not to find before. You weren't wrong to look for it. He is there. His name is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life, the Bible says. It's good to study and to research and to learn. It's good to advocate, to disciple, to read, to reason with others. But then at a certain point, we have to drop it and say, you know what? I've done my best. I, I just have to lift it up to God. Then we just sing a worship song to God. I love this example in Romans chapter 11, verse 33 to 36. Romans is what people call Paul's magnum opus, his greatest work, where he has so much highfalutin <laughs> reasoning. And until now, you know, people spend lifetimes, you know, they spend their entire lifetime studying the book of Romans, you know, because it's just so rich in thought, in, in theology, so rich in godly truth. And yet after doing all of that, while doing all of that, he's in the peak of his you know, reasoning, he suddenly bursts out in verse 33, he goes, 11.33, Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments, how unscrutable his ways. Then he breaks into this quote from a, from a song, a worship song to God. For who has known the mind of the Lord, who has been his counselor, who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid. For from him and through him and to him are all things, to him be glory forever. Amen. And what commentators have said is that while Paul was writing this deep theology, this deep reasoning, while he was responding to arguments people had made and coming to his own conclusions, it led him not to having a hard heart, a cynical, jaded, distant, uh, academic in an ivory tower worldview. No. This person, while he was writing, bursts into song. Bursts into song to say, Grabe ka, Lord. Grabe ka, wala hang katulad. Iba ka. Pag-iisipan ko to, I'll think about this, I'll study this, but at the end of the day, you are beyond me. Some of us need that. Do not worship our own mind, our own, I'm so good, look at how I responded, eh, look at the ratio, the likes to the dislikes. No, 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 no. Worship God. Or maybe it's the other end. Maybe you're so wounded. That's what many of us are doing now. You know, in, in the church, we encounter so many bad news. We go and we minister and we pray, and you know this. It's many of you have had to do this also with losing loved ones or knowing people who have lost loved ones. And at a certain point, you, you just don't have a reason. You just don't know how your words could, probably take, could possibly take their pain away. There's nothing you can say, very little you can do. But we can worship God together and say, Lord, I don't, I don't know what you're doing. But show me. Show me that you are good, that you are true, that you are loving. And allow me to stay near to these people to help them through this time. Open your heart to Him. And you will find the one who engages your questions. You will find the one you can't tear down. You will find the reality you can't deny. You will find the hope that doesn't disappoint. And finally, learn and grow with others who are also pursuing God. And I pray if, if we're part of a Christian community like that, then I pray we let people ask questions. Sometimes we come across as God's uh, lawyers instead of His ambassadors. We're God's lawyers. You know, so when people have questions about God, ah, my client can neither confirm nor deny. No, just, you are not God's lawyer. You are God's ambassador. God can handle their questions. You can bring your questions together with that person to God and let God respond. And as we grow together in that kind of community, I believe we'll have more critical minds and less critical spirits. Lord, please help us. Help us not to think too much of our own thinking. Lord, kulang din naman kami. Instead, Lord, we want to trust you. We want to be close to you. Uh, we want to learn what you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next week.